maybe contacted you. They tried to do it on, uh, in ADCC. They contacted you. Obviously, everything went well with you again. But then that whole issue happened with Guy, I believe, or the ADCC and Hoyler. Well, what actually happened was uh, Sheik Talk Noon flew me out for a week. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. So yeah. I was out there training with him for a week. And after we were done, he said, Let's, he's, we're, he's just sitting in his gym. We're just sitting there. And he's like in this little weight rack. And he said, what fight do you want? I'm going to make that fight happen right now. What do you want? Who do you want right now? I said, you think you can make Hoyler rematch happen again? And he said, easy. Called up Henzo. Henzo called up Hoyler. Henzo, Hoyler agreed. Henzo calls me, or calls him. He says, boom, it's on. <laughs> so just like that, it was just on. No negotiations, no nothing. I wouldn't bring up any money or anything. But uh, it was going to be uh, $75,000 winner take all. Wow. In ADCC? Yeah. That's like winner take all. Destroying the conservative element of ADCC. Of, you know, cause <laughs> they don't want to change the, you know, uh, like go wild on anything. So that's like, pretty much the first time they kind of gave leverage or they compromised, right? I didn't yeah. ask for that. I didn't, that, that and was he still there. rejected it, right? He wanted more money. Did Metamorphs offer that money? So as soon as he, so what ended up happening is he accepted it, right? It's next day, it's all over the news, it's on, he does an interview, he says lightning's not gonna strike twice, he got lucky that first time, all that stuff, like it's on, like yeah. Donkey Kong, right? I remember that. Yeah. And then I did an interview, it was on. And then Guy calls me up and says, hmm, I don't think Coyler's going to back out. And I said, what do you think? I mean, he just did an interview. He goes, ah, read the end of, read the, end of the interview. So I, I went through it, and he said, well, the contracts are, aren't signed yet. You know, we still got a little negotiations to do, but it looks like it's, it's, it's probably going to happen. So when Guy read that, he realized, okay, I know what he's doing. He's going to back out of this because nobody negotiates with, with, with yeah. Abu Dhabi. Nobody. You just do it or you don't. You, 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 you know what I mean? There's never been any yeah, negotiations. Yeah. And all of a sudden, and he's been in Abu Dhabi four times. And all of a sudden, he wants to negotiate. So that, to Guy, meant it wasn't on. So, and that's exactly what happened. He, he said he wanted more money, and they said, hell no. So it didn't happen. And then, um, um, uh, I would say, a couple years pass, and then Halleck calls me up. And he says, do you want to do the rematch with Hoyler at Meta Morris? And uh, I thought, of course, obviously. Um, and I, I would have did it for a thousand dollars. I would have did it for a thousand dollars, really. Yeah. But once I heard, day one, actually, but, that, yeah. but then once I heard what everybody was getting paid, in Meta Morris. <laughs> once I heard what everyone, was, I'm like, oh my god, this this, this guy's getting you know thirty thousand dollars. This guy's getting forty. What? I go, okay. So um, uh, I asked for more than a <laughs> thousand, and I got it. You know, and it 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 happened. And uh, there was a lot of. Uh, I guess you could call it um, kind of like red tape, maybe. Yeah. But there was a lot of problems actually trying to like the negotiations. It was crazy. I don't know if you remember like the whole situation with the, my pants. Oh yeah, that? of course. Yeah, like, yeah. all that. They try to change so uh, you couldn't use pants, shorts. Uh, yeah. you can't grip or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like because I was wearing pants, so Hoyler found out I was wearing pants. So what ended up happening is I, I didn't know, I didn't know if I sh what I should wear, like you know. Should I wear a rash guard? Should I not wear a rash guard? Should I wear my pants? Should I wear shorts? Should I wear tights? Should I wear mm, spats? I don't know. Everybody wears different stuff, right? So at first, I said, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to... Was, I was worried about him. Um, I was worried about leg locks. So generally, I always wear pants and ankle sleeves because when I put a lockdown in, it's very hard to get out of. But I knew he, was, he, he, he didn't hesitate going for foot locks, and I thought, man, he's going to... He might jump on my legs. Maybe I should just wear shorts and tights. I wasn't sure. So um, I started training with pants, and I went to Jean Jacques, and all those guys grab pants all the time. And I'm like, um, uh, no, no, how did it go? Hold on. No, first, first I decided to wear shorts. Then I did some training, and then I go, you know, what am I doing? I'm just going to wear what I always wear pants so I, I um i looked at the contract and it said all competitors must wear board shorts and rash guard and i'm like oh is this actually saying i can't wear pants so i called up halleck i go on the contract it says i can't wear pants I, i'm gonna wear pants and he goes uh I, I don't think it'll be a problem i'm like i shouldn't even be asking him i could just wear whatever i want pants or whatever so then he goes okay i asked hoyler and he said you could wear pants as long as he could grab them i remember and like, that and i'm like grab them what do you mean so i could grab his shorts he goes no you can't grab shorts because People don't grab shorts, but they grab pants. I go, wait a minute. 
what's the difference? Pants, shorts, just because they go past your knees, all of a sudden, now you can grab them. But if they don't go, if they stop here, you can't grab them. But if they go here, you can grab them. If they're, or if they go here and they're, <laughs> they're form-fitting, now you can't, if they're spats, no one grabs spats. No one grabs tights. So if you're wearing tights and shorts, can't grab anything. But if you're wearing pants, now all of a sudden you can grab them just because they do it in the gi. Didn't make it, doesn't make any sense. So I said, okay, he can grab them. I don't care, but I'm gonna grab his shorts and rip them off. And, they go, and then it became a big deal. Like, oh, you can't, you're not gonna grab his shorts. I'm like, he's grabbing my pants. No, no, I, I train pants all the time. No one ever mm -hmm. grabs them. And when you go no gi, you can't grab clothes. It's no big deal. You just can't, it's not, it's not crazy. You're wearing, so it became a big problem. So, um, uh, I trained a little bit. I remember training with Todd White and he was grabbing the hell out of my pants and passing my guard by grabbing. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't wear pants. Damn, I thought I could, maybe it is a bad idea. So I told Alec, I ain't gonna wear pants. He goes, no, you have to wear pants. Now you can't switch it up. Cause, he, Cause Hoyler said, I'll let him wear pants, but he can't change his mind. <laughs> like now they're dictating all these what I can mind wear. games, man. Yeah, but I can't change my mind? Like I can't just show up in board shorts day of, and that's gonna be a problem? There's, what's going on here? So, uh, and then Halleck thought, okay, this is the new rule. I talked to Hoyler's lawyer and Hoyler, and they said, okay, every, you could grab everything. You could grab rash guards, you could pull on rash guards and pull on pants and shorts. And I'm like, you know how ridiculous that's gonna look? We're grabbing rash guards? What are you thinking? It's gonna look ridiculous. So then, it, you know, then it was it was crazy. And then we just, just then I decided, okay, okay, no grabbing rash guards because I don't want to waste my time training all this time. And then we're grabbing rash guards. That's it's gonna be ridiculous. I go, Yeek, I'm gonna wear pants, and he could grab my pants, and I can't grab none of his stuff. Let's just do this. I go, grab my pants then. So he grabbed the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he was grabbing like he was putting his hand in the back of my 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 pants and grabbing like this. Like he was yeah. grabbing my pants like that, dude. Like in the guard, he would grab him. He's like, whoa, this guy's really taking advantage of that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you guys have a good relationship. I saw you guys uh, yesterday. At the oh, we're totally area, cool. Yeah. We're totally cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think uh, you know as as you get older, you know, uh, <laughs> you really. I never had a problem. Yeah. I thought I was always appreciative of just being in the middle of everything, win or lose. I was like, I already beat him, so I'm like, even if I lose metamorphs, I'm still in the mix. You know what I mean? But um, I felt like I needed to win, though. I felt like to prove uh, my philosophies. You know, um, yeah. I remember one time writing sketches with Joe in his big ass theater room in his big ass house, and we felt there was some tension. Like, like man, like I felt like I made a mistake. I should have stayed at the strip club. He was like under pressure now because he he realized that they lied to him and they totally fucked him. And well, the guys um, lied to. So now we're trying to write new sketches, and I remember not we're like just sitting there for a couple hours and nothing's nothing's happening and inside i felt like i was screaming inside like i felt like there was something inside like like i wouldn't never commit suicide never but i understood how weak people who lose their jobs like i'm like that's why they do it i get it now wow really you know what i mean wow. i get it I'm like dude i'm gonna be i'm like i'm gonna be 33 i'm gonna have nothing i'm gonna be unemployed where the fuck am i gonna work that's what I thought. And I was a brown belt in jujitsu. And the only thing, the only light in my life at that point was that I had ADCC 2003 coming up. I had a free trip to Brazil. I didn't think I was going to beat anybody or anything. I'm like a brown belt. I felt like I got lucky. I won the trials. I'm like, shit, I didn't expect that. And uh, now, now at least I get a free trip to Brazil. Joe was coming with me. That was in the contract because when Joe signed the contract, he said, in May, we're taking off for four days to Brazil. <laughs> You know, because Joe's gonna do, or because Eddie's gonna do um, a, a, a big world championship tournament. And they're like, okay, <laughs> stay a week. They didn't give a shit. So um, the cool thing about that was, like, Joe knew that how depressed I was. I was when I did 2003. That's the most depressed I've ever been. I was super depressed. Didn't know, tell, huh? didn't, oh, know yeah. didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. My for sure, best case scenario, they don't fire me, and the show gets gonna get canceled. The sketches that were green lighting were horrible, horrible sketches. A couple of them were all right. A couple Even the ones that you were creating, you felt weren't right too. Or well, they only they only used two, and there yeah, was that, they they had a whole bunch of them. But they, another guy there was a bunch of there was like nine writers total, oh, and the head God. writer brought in all his buddies, God, and he was God. green lighting his buddy sketches. Not your stuff. God. Yeah, that, yeah. The head writer green lights it, and they weren't green lighting. They green lit two of mine. That's it, and um, and I wrote a sketch every day. Man, it was. 
it's, it's not that easy coming up with a sketch every day. <laughs> I wrote one on um, it was a parody on uh, sitcom. You know, Family Matters. Yeah. You ever see the yeah. they show Family yeah. Matters? The guy with, with Urkel. Urkel. Yeah, Urkel, the guy. Yeah, with yeah. The, Family Matters. That was Moses the, pants all over. That them. wasn't the big English show. So I, I came, <laughs> I came up with this, really, yeah. I came up with a sketch called um, Manson Family Matters. <laughs> where it was like part Family Matters, but part Charles Manson's family, like his family. That's like Urkel was still in it, but Charles Manson was the dad, and then Marilyn Manson. 